Right. Ciao a tutti. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this special Destination Spotlight on three very special Italian cities, Venice, Florence, and Rome. We will start in just a few minutes. Uh, so in the meantime, let us know where you are tuning in from in the comment box. If you are joining us on Facebook, let us know there where you are tuning in from. Volare Oh Cantare Welcome everyone. As you start coming in, let us know in the chat where you are tuning in from. We are just going to wait a few minutes for more people to join us. Ma tutti i sogni nell'alba svaniscono perché Quando tramonta la luna mi porta con sé Ma io continuo a sognare negli occhi tuoi belli Che sono blu come un cielo Trapunto di stelle Hello, Frank and Marion from Tennessee. Cantare. <laughs> yeah, I believe the chat was disabled, but now you can let us know where you're tuning in from. We'll start in just one more minute. Continua a volare felice più in alto del sole ed ancora più su mentre il mondo pian piano scompare negli occhi tuoi blu la tua voce è una musica dolce che suona per me volare ok i think we have a good number of people with us so we can go ahead and start. Hello, welcome everyone. And as they say in Italian, buongiorno or good day. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Claudia. I'm from the Go Ahead team and I am coming to you live from Boston. For today's travel talk, we are virtually traveling to three spectacular cities in Italy. It's Venice, Florence, and Rome to learn more about its diverse architecture, cuisine, culture, and rich history. We are joined today by expert tour director, Tini, live from Italy. She's here to share her stories and expertise with you all and will introduce herself in just a moment. Now, I wanna make a very exciting announcement before we begin, and that is that we are now running tours to Italy. With availability starting as early as this August, you can start dreaming about your Italian escape and make it a reality this summer. All right, so the plan today is to walk through some webinar tips so you can maximize your time with us. Then we'll go over what makes this country and Charmoli with Go Ahead so spectacular. And after our beloved tour director will take it away and talk about the tour that covers these cities share her insights and stories, and then answer some of your questions at the end during the Q&A portion of this webinar. Now, we received a lot of pre-submitted questions, and we will try to answer as many as we can during our Q&A section at the end. But if we don't get to yours, please know that you can call or email us at any time. If this is your first webinar, welcome. We are so excited to have you here. Unlike a normal video call, your cameras and microphones are completely turned off. You will only see and hear me, your host and our tour director. We can see you, we can hear you, but of course we want to hear from you. Throughout this travel talk, please feel welcome to use the chat box to interact with each other and the Q&A box to pose questions to your speaker. If you are joining us on Facebook, welcome. You can also use the comment box there to ask questions during the Q&A at the end. All right, let's jump right in. Everybody, let's buckle our seatbelts. We are getting on the go-ahead airplane and we are virtually traveling to Italia. Try as you may, it's impossible to choose a favorite among Venice, Florence, and Rome. Each city is unique in its own right, which distinctive flavors, sights, and sounds. You can 
float along Venice meandering canals. You can gain respect for the Renaissance masters in Florence. Uh, you can walk in the footsteps of the ancients in Rome. And of course, you'll be eating like a king or a queen no matter where you are. Now, to all the foodies out there, You'll also know that Italy, of course, is globally famous for its delicious cuisine, which is by far one of the most well-recognized and popular in the world. For many, though, pizza and pasta are the dishes that they most equate with Italian food, as well as gelato, coffee, and wine. And now, while these are, of course, very popular across all of Italy, there are so many more gastronomic delights for you to discover when you visit. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce your wonderful speaker for today, Tini. Tini, would you be so kind to introduce yourself to our audience? Sure, Claudia, thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, buonasera, everybody, it's evening here in Italy. Uh, my name is Tini, I've been a tour director for the last 10 years, and I'm very happy to be with you guys. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> thank you so much, Tini, thank you for being here. Now, planning a trip, can be super overwhelming, but with Go Ahead, it doesn't have to be. One thing that sets us apart is our unique itinerary offerings that cater to any travel style. Uh, for our hotels, our specialized team can pick every single one and make sure they are safe, top quality, and are located in a convenient area to the destination. Uh, apart from your tour director, which is of course with you every step of the way, we also have expert local guides on the ground waiting to meet you and discover the destination with you. When you arrive on your included flight, we'll be there to pick you up and we'll also be there to whisk you around the country or countries that you're visiting. As for the tour experience, we have staff all over the world who curate itineraries and activities so you can experience a destination just like the locals do. And lastly, our tour directors, they are the heart of the tour. They manage the logistics, like picking up from the airport, showing you the major sites and getting you acclimated. But they do so much more than that. They are friendly face, a teacher, a friend. They're fun, charismatic, entertaining, and full of information. Now, some of you might not be familiar with our Venice, Florence, and Rome tour, which is actually one of our best-selling tours to this region. Um, in fact, it is so popular that we have two versions of this tour. We have a nine-day trip and a 12-day trip. Today, we will be focusing on the 12-day tour starting in Venice and ending in Rome, unless you decide to add the very recommended extension to the Sorrento Peninsula region. We also have many more Italian tours that cater to every travel style, including food and wine tours and walking tours. I will now let Tini take it away so she can tell you more about this tour and all the wonderful things that you can see here and taste during this trip. But actually, before I do that, if to everyone that's watching, I wanna ask you a question. And that is how many islands do you think make up Venice? Now, you will see a poll pop up on your screen with multiple options and there you can choose how many islands you think Venice has. And this is only on Zoom. So if you're joining us on Facebook, you can say in the comments, right? Uh, how many islands you think there are. But to our friends on Zoom, choose a, an answer from the options that you see on your screen uh, to see if you guess correctly. We're just gonna wait a few seconds for those answers to trickle in. Well, let me say that, that that is not an easy question <laughs> at all. So there are Definitely no wrong not. answers. <laughs> oh, wow. Tini, are you surprised? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Actually, I am. <laughs> a big percentage of the, the audience watching got it right. <laughs> That's actually impressive. All right, Tini. Well, now you've been, the <laughs> they've been on a tour then. They've been on a tour for sure. <laughs> well, we start with my favorite, Claudia. Um, you know, I was born nearby Venice in a little town called Asolo. So I grew up in Venice. You know, I studied there and lived there. And I'm in love with Venice every time I, I'm there. I see something different. So I think that it's called love. 
I guess. Mm -hmm. And I love this picture because here you can see how Venice looks like from, you know, from above. You can see how many islands we have, uh, you know, 118 islands put together by 438 bridges. Then it depends on the guidebook you read. But here you can see this big bridge above that is connecting Venice to the mainland, you know, because before that bridge was built and that bridge was built only in 1846 by the Austrians, um, there was no way to Venice. I mean, the only way to get to Venice was by boat. Nowadays, we cross a bridge, you know, if you come to Venice with a bus, with a car or by train. And once you have crossed that bridge, the only way to get around is by walk, uh, walking or you have to take a boat. You know, because as you can see, there are no streets in Venice. Uh, there are just canals. And the only way to get around is, you know, walking or taking boats, as I said. So, and well, this is one of my favorite uh, um, places in, uh, in uh, Venice. This is a Salutes church. Do you know, Claudia, that Venice is built on marshy lands? Mm, and, um... I, I heard something about that, but I'm not really <laughs> sure how everything was put together. <laughs> Well, Venice is built over hundreds and hundreds of wooden poles driven into the mud in order to make the soil more stable. Because Venice is a floating city, it's built on marshy lands. For example, this building that we can see in this, in this picture, the Salutes Church, is built over a million wooden poles driven into the mud in order to make the soil more stable because this is a lagoon. So it's quite unique and still standing, which is quite amazing. And you know, well, uh, this is the view of the Grand Canal. This is our fifth avenue. The most beautiful palaces are built along the Grand Canal and you know, the most beautiful hotels and everything. And uh, you know, during our tour, of course, we offer transportation to our guests, to our travelers. We provide boats, boats ride, and uh, you know, we, we pick up the people to, uh, of course, at the, at the hotel. We bring them downtown in uh, St. Mark Square in order to start our walking tour. So we provide, of course, transportation. And as tour directors, we always explain to the people uh, what is the best way to get around. Uh, because we do have public transportation in Venice, of course. So we explain to our travelers how public transportation works in Venice and how to get a ticket, how much it is, and so on. And Dini, how much can, can tourists expect to pay for these types of transportation? Uh, well, you know, uh, of course, Go Ahead offers transportation all the time. So all the boat rides are included. And um, if our customers are, um, they wish just to take a public boat, for example, the public you know, the public boat that is going around the city, a ticket nowadays costs about seven, eight euros. So we always, you know, help the people um, to buy the ticket and so on. So it's not expensive. It's, it's quite affordable. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. And of course, you know, we have also the gondola ride, which is also a part of our experience. We offer the gondola ride as, a, as an optional. And, you know, I always uh, recomm recommend to our guests to, uh, to get on a gondola in Venice because I think that is part of the experience. This is one of the 438 bridges we have in Venice. Mm -hmm. And uh, during our tour, of course, you will be walking over a lot of them. Um, you know, Claudia, our um, tour in Venice is a walking tour because of course um, of course we take a boat to um, you know the city center of, of uh, Venice but then uh, during the tour we walk a lot so we have to cross a few bridges and by being with a local guide we always take shortcuts around the city mm -hmm. but you know we have so many bridges in Venice and some of them are very ancient um, we have four bridges in Venice that have no handrail but the most of them uh, they do have handrail of course and during the tour we are going to learn a lot about uh, the beautiful Sema Square, which is the only wide space we have in Venice. As you can see, Venice is like a labyrinth, right? And it's very easy to get lost. And uh, I mean, everybody gets lost in Venice. <laughs> I do get lost in Venice and I was born nearby. So it's quite uh, normal. And I, I have to say that is the best way to get to learn the city. And uh, during the tour, we are lucky enough to be able to enter the beautiful St. Mark's Basilica, which is one of the favorite uh, 
places in, in Italy. Look, this is a, a part of uh, uh, St. Mark's Square. These two columns represent the entrance into the city of Venice. And of course, we will learn everything about, uh, about uh, the area. And we will step inside the Basilica of St. Mark's, which is one of my favorite churches. Of course, you know, Italy is all about churches, it's, it's true. But this church, this basilica is quite different because it has a very strong medieval flavor. Um, sorry, oriental flavor, um, medieval as well, but more oriental than medieval. And inside, as you can see, it's full of mosaics and some of them uh, dates back to the 11th century. And these mosaics are covered in gold leaf, which is amazing. 27,000 feet of glass mosaics, um, wonderful. And this church is like a little straight Bible, you know, it's very rich and super decorated, all different marbles coming from far away from the Middle East. And we will learn everything about that during our tour with our local guide. A lot of history. And then, uh, you know, our guests have also the possibility to enjoy their free time and to directors, we always recommend to step inside the Doge's Palace, which is this one. And it's where the seat of the government of Venice used to be when Venice was a republic. The Doge is the prince, the ruler of the city. And inside is just magnificent. Um, of course, we recommend, uh, you know, to buy the ticket and so on. We help our guests to buy the ticket and we direct them to the correct entrance. And, uh, you know, we have some free time in the afternoon so people can decide uh, if they wanna go on a gondola ride, if they wanna see the Dodgers Palace, if they, if they want to get lost in Venice, which is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, highly recommended. And um, we have plenty of free time, you know, go ahead. Uh, Claudia has a good balance of a busy time and free time. And of course we recommend the best places to get uh, a drink, maybe a spritz, which is a local, you know, a local drink. The Florian Cafe is very famous. It's very posh. It's where Casanova used to go. But of course we have uh, different uh, places for all the budgets, you know. And this is a split. This is my favorite drink. <laughs> if you have been on a tour with me, you know that I always recommend to our guests to have a spritz at least once a day uh, <laughs> to enjoy the local, you know, the local tradition in Venice. This is a, a, a drink made with uh, Prosecco, which is sparkling white wine from the Venetian hills mixed with uh, uh, Campari or Aperol and with some soda. And of course, it's better to eat something while you enjoy this great, this wonderful drink. And of course, the Venetian cuisine is very particular, Claudia, because uh, um, we have, as I said, a lot of relationship in the past with the Middle East. So there are a lot of Eastern uh, flavor in our cuisine. For example, these are people, you know, enjoying a drink over the canal overlook the canal. For example, the sardine saor is a plate, is a dish that I like a lot. And these are sardines uh, mixed with onion, raisins, and pine nuts. And, um, and it's a bit uh, sour, sour bitter uh, flavor because uh, um, it has a lot of vinegar inside as well. So it has a very particular taste that goes along very well with a spritz or a glass of Prosecco, for example, that is our local wine there. And you know, we have a lot of uh, bars in Venice. They are called Baccaro, Baccaros. And in every Baccaro, you can have a chiquetto. What a chiquetto is, is like a, a tapa. Yeah, in Spanish, we say tapa. So a little portion of food, basically. And you can, you know, enjoy different kinds of foods uh, not big portion, but you can be a little bit adventurous because you can have a little bit of uh, codfish, a little bit of uh, meatballs, you know, and uh, uh, prawns, and uh, you can mix everything and you can be a little bit adventurous while, of course, you enjoy your spritz. I love this, Tini. I cannot wait to have some tapas in Venice more so a spritz or two in St. Mark's Square after the year that we've had. Um, but now that we've explored Venice, uh, which city are we headed to next? Well, next, the next destination is the wonderful city of Florence, which is not a long ride, by the way. And I actually, I have to say that I enjoy very much leaving the hotel in the morning um, because the most of the time we have to take a ferry uh, with the bus to get to the mainland 
and then um, and then on the bus, of course, we get uh, by motorway uh, to Florence. It is not a long drive; it's about three hours and something. And we get to Florence, which is different from Venice. You know, Florence is a uh, is a city with, of course, with streets, with cars, with motorcycles, and it has a very strong medieval flavor. And I love the this view uh, because here you can actually see very well how um, the historical center of Florence looks like. You can see the dome of the Cathedral of Florence, uh, Santa Maria del Fiore. And this dome was built uh, at the end of the 1200s without the use of scaffoldings, which is quite amazing, quite unique. And, uh, you know, and doing the sightseeing of tour of Florence, again, it is a walking tour um, because uh, the streets of Florence are very narrow. They cannot fit a bus. So in order to experience the historical center, um, we are going to walk around, of course, with a local guide all the time. And we are going to learn a lot about this particular site. Uh, this is the facade of the Cathedral of Florence. And as you can see, Claudia, it's over decorated, uh, the beautiful you know, statues, and we learn everything everything about it um even though i have to say that the facade of this church is quite recent uh well for our standards because i was just uh, uh finished the end of the 1800s um but you know during the tour we will learn everything about this magnificent church as well as the signoria square that is where the city hall is located and uh, we are going to uh, walk the street of Florence. As you can see, the streets are very narrow, but I always say, Claudia, that um, Florence is a very walkable city. It's very easy to find your way around. And the first thing we do when we get there, we give to the people, we give to our guests a map and we make sure they know their way around. You know, we highlight uh, the, the, the highlights, uh, of course, of the historical center, something that you cannot miss. And we explain to the people how to get around. And uh, as I said, it's very easy to walk around Florence. And um, that is the best way to, to, you know, to experience and to get to know the city. And our hotels are always good located in the city center. And uh, this is a beautiful view of uh, the Ponte Vecchio, which, by the way, was the only bridge that was not bombed during the Second World War. It's still there. And I love also uh, the shops there because, you know, uh, Claudia, that uh, Florence is always a city that is uh, is also a city famous for um, leather and gold. And there are a lot of uh, beautiful shops around that uh, area. And uh, during the tour, by the way, we always uh, you know, um, have a view uh, of the Ponte Vecchio as well. And we also give to our guests you know, the possibility, different options, let's say, how to enjoy their free, free time after uh, the end of the tour. So, for example, <laughs> this is one, you know, a cultural option, something that I highly recommend uh, to do is to get inside one of these magnificent museums we have in Florence. This one is the, the Uffizi Museum, and if you are, uh, if you like art, uh, you know, Flor Florence is a cradle of the Renaissance, inside here you will find a lot of artworks. Uh, we are talking about the VIPs of the Italian Renaissance, we are talking about uh, uh, Sandro Botticelli, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, you know, oh, these people are quite, uh, are quite famous. And uh, I always uh, recommend to our uh, people to buy the tickets well in advance because, you know, during the high season especially, it can be very busy and it is very hard to find ticket last minute. So I always recommend uh, to our guests to buy ticket well in advance before flying to Italy also to avoid you know waiting in line forever so we have this beautiful museum that is in the historical center of Florence of course as tour directors we always you know uh, direct people to um, you know the correct entrance or we help with maps and you know we do um, help with the orientation um, and another museum that I highly recommend to our uh, customers to our guests is the Accademia which is where the real David by Michelangelo is. And uh, here he is, it's a beautiful sculpture. And uh, 
uh, well, of course, it's a masterpiece. Um, it's it amazing. I mean, uh, it amazes me how Michelangelo was able to, uh, you know, uh, create all these details in marble, which still amazes me all the time. Uh, but, you know, during the walking tour with our local guide, um, since we have a perfect copy of the David in the Signoria Square, we will learn everything about it. This is a Signoria Square. This is a political, um, you know, center of the city. And there is where the copy uh, of the David is, as well as the Palazzo Vecchio, the city hall, and other beautiful sculptures and fountains like uh, the Neptune fountains, uh, which is this one. That is this one, exactly. And so, you know, uh, it, is, it is a very uh, dense city. Uh, and uh, I would say that, you know, Italy uh, is a small country. And within a small country, we find so many different things because Florence is very diff different from Venice and then Rome will be another story. So, and there is a lot, uh, really a lot to, to learn. And of course, you know, <laughs> something when we talk about Italy, we have to talk about food, yes. And uh, Florence is one of my favorite uh, uh, destination uh, for, well, because I, I'm a good uh, porchetta, like we say in, in Italian, I like uh, eating uh, a lot. And uh, one thing that uh, we always do, we, we recommend to our guests where to, you know, to go uh, to eat something. And this is a trattoria. Trattoria is an uh, Italian board. It's like a restaurant. And, you know, the, the cuisine in Florence is very related uh, so with um, well, with, with meat especially, and also we produce a lot of uh, wine there, red wine that we will mention afterwards. Of course, we have a lot of cheese. If you if you guys like cheese, here <laughs> you can go you know crazy with all different kind of cheeses. Like for example, the ones made the ones made with uh, uh, you know meat. Uh, sorry, uh, milk, uh, the cow milk. Uh, the sheep milk, the goat. I mean, we have so many different kinds of cheeses and then we have different kinds of salami and so on. Um, it's very, very, very various. Um, people uh, always ask me, how can you eat uh, pasta every day? <laughs> well, <laughs> I can. I don't know if you can, Claudia, but I can eat, uh, eat pasta every day. No, no problem. I could not do that. <laughs> But for example, here you can see, you know, a, a, a dish of pasta, pasta dish with some um, with some sauce made with meat. You know, in uh, in Florence, people like to eat, uh, for example, the wild boar. So it's very easy to find the pasta, fresh pasta made with um, served with a sauce made uh, out of wild boar. It's very common there. And uh, we eat also uh, something very uh, local is a flore, la Fiorentina, the Florentine steak, uh, which is uh, a big T-bone steak. And uh, something that I should mention, if you go inside a restaurant and you ordered a Fiorentina, of course they are quite big. So we always recommend to our guests to, you know, to share because it's, usually it's very, very big. Yeah, and you never ask for a well done Fiorentina. <laughs> Otherwise, the waiter probably will tell you to order chicken. Oh, it has to be like medium raw. Uh, that is the way it's, uh, it is served. And on the right side, this is our ver ver version of uh, like fast food, <laughs> our McDonald's, let's say, because this is a sandwich made with Lampredotto. Lampre Lampredotto is uh, is the second stomach of the cow. So it's something that, uh, I don't know, maybe it sounds a little bit uh, mm, like, let's say, you know, disgusting, but we can be picky nowadays, you know, but this comes from the old, uh, old farming tradition. You know, my parents or my grandparents, parents, they uh, eat everything. Uh, and this is uh, very related to our, uh, to our history. So, they didn't throw away anything about, uh, you know, the, the animal and they were eating everything. So this comes from that, uh, you know, farming tradition in the past. And still today, people eat a sandwich with the second stomach of the cow. And 
of course, gelato, <laughs> which uh, I, I highly, highly recommend. Uh, you know, I always say to our guests, you have to do you have to eat a gelato a day. One gelato a day keeps the doctor away. And in Florence, for example, there is a, a place that I always mention to our guests, it's called Vivoli. I take people there uh, with me uh, after the, you know, the end of the tour, just to enjoy a scoop or two of gelato. And, um, you know, it's, it's, you have to, you know, get your calories and to, <laughs> to enjoy also some, uh, you know, some moment of happiness. And, uh, you know, uh, while you walk the street of Florence, something that you might be uh, noticing are these uh, Buchette del Vino. And if you translate uh, Buchette del Vino into English will be like the little holes of the wine. Uh, this is something that is 500 years old. Uh, centuries ago, people living inside those palaces, they uh, were struggling a little bit and they uh, invented a way to make some extra money by selling people, uh, by selling wine uh, to the people passing by, wine by the glass. And uh, this is not uh, happening any anymore, unfortunately, uh, otherwise I will be there uh, running one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that was a way to, to, to make some extra money. And they are still there, by the way, you can still see these little holes uh, while walking the street of Florence. Uh, but of course, they are not uh, in use anymore. Tini, I think if they still existed, they would be making a lot of money from exactly from right. <laughs> now, before we head on, we actually have a question from the audience. We have mm -hmm. two, uh, and they, Mary and Debbie, they want to know which museums are included in the tour and which ones are optional excursions. You know, Florence is such an um, amazing city and it is like an open air museum. So we always give to the people, you know, time to decide what they prefer to do. Um, on a longer version of uh, Betty's Florence in Rome, we offer the Academia Museum as an optional. So you can always book that uh, in advance. Uh, I mean, you can book the option with go ahead. And of course we provide, uh, uh, you know, like a guided tour inside. Um, otherwise, just uh, if you are not sure which one, uh, you know, you uh, want to see, um, you can always ask, you know, go ahead how much free time you have and then uh, go ahead, we'll help you to, uh, you know, uh, to book uh, the entrances. I mean, to give you the time to, or to suggest you what is the best way to buy uh, the tickets to get inside, for example, the Uffizi. But we uh, offer only uh, the, the Academia tour as an optional, yes, not the Uffizi one. And just so the Uffizi in the, is included? Mm, no, the Uffizi is not uh, included, no. It's just uh, an idea for free time. Yeah, activity. exactly, exactly. Okay, yes. great. Thank you. You're welcome. And San Gimignano, of course, we offer this uh, optional uh, because, you know, um, Italy is, yes, is about big cities like Venice, Florence and Rome, but it is also uh, about countryside and you don't want to miss the countryside of Tuscany. And it is a beautiful countryside, beautiful hills uh, covered with uh, vineyards. You know, the wine making tradition is very strong in that area. And a way to experience the countryside is uh, by taking this optional to San Gimignano. That is uh, like, I always say to the people, it's like a Manhattan of the medieval times because uh, we still have today, we have 13 uh, tower houses there. So little medieval skyscrapers and that are still visible. And uh, we used to have more in the past. We used to have 30, well, we used to have 72 uh, during the medieval times. And nowadays we have those 13 uh, still standing. You see, I always, uh, I love the, uh, the skyline of San Gimignano and of course beautiful hills covered with olive trees and vineyards and uh, it's a small town uh, located at the top of a hill and um, you know you get to see the countryside which is uh, uh, one of the reasons why Italy is so famous uh, around the world 
and we will be walking, you know, those uh, streets, those medieval streets of San Gimignano. Uh, during the same excursion on the same day, we always uh, uh, also we experience some wine tasting, which is, you know, part of the journey, part of the experience. And we get to learn a lot about uh, wine as well, because winemaking is an ancient tradition in Italy. So it's very much part of our, of our culture, of course. Thank you, Tini. Now, for those who don't drink, like Anthony, uh, he wants to know what are good types of non-alcoholic drinks that they can find in Italy or on this tour? Mm, okay, let me think. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, you know, um, it is true that in Italy, for example, we don't have a lot of, we don't drink a lot of soft drinks like Coke or, you know, those things. Um, but of course you can find, you know, very healthy uh, lemon juices, for example, especially if you take the Sorrento excursion, you know, Sorrento Peninsula is very famous for, you know, those big lemons and uh, you can enjoy, you know, uh, fresh squeezed lemon juice down there um, and uh, well let me well see I, I, yeah the lemonade down there <laughs> <laughs> clearly alcohol is a big part um, of it. um it no, well <laughs> It's very, you know, it, it, it is true that uh, Italian wines are famous all over the world. And, uh, and of course, we provide to our guests, you know, uh, whatever they like. But they, they don't have to drink wine if they don't want to. We have beers as well. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Tini. Now, the San Gimignano excursion is very popular among our travelers, but we also recommend adding the Pisa excursion so they can check off another important site off their list. So can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about that, this experience? Um, but actually, before we do that, I have another poll for the audience. And I want to ask you all, why do you think the Tower of Pisa is leaning? Now, you're going to see a poll pop up on your screen again on Zoom. And the options are, was it an architecture mistake? Is it an optical illusion? Did the structure start sinking or was it built this way uh, by design? So please choose uh, the answer that you think is correct. And then Tini will then uh, talk a little bit more about this experience. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. I got it wrong the first time, Tini. Or me too. <laughs> it's not that obvious. <laughs> there we go. Very well. Thinking. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tini. Tell us you about Pisa. Sure. Well, Pisa is a short, uh, short drive from Florence. Uh, we get there by bus, uh, and we get to uh, learn a lot about the Miracle Square. This beautiful square, you know, but it's not just a tower. Of course, the tower is very famous. She is one of the symbols of Italy. This tower uh, was made in the 12th century. And it started leaning just after the end of the construction because as, you know, a lot of people uh, know already, uh, the soil is very soft there. It's a very sandy soil. So it's not very hard. And this tower is made of marble. So it's super heavy, 14,700 tons. So yes, it is heavy. And uh, during the tour, uh, we, all, we also go, um, well, we learn a lot about the tower. We get inside the Cathedral of Pisa, which is next, uh, of course, the next building. And we see the back side of it. And and which is, thank you. <laughs> this is a facade, it's a beautiful building and we get to learn a lot, a lot uh, about, uh, uh, you know, the Miracle Square, the Piazza dei Miracoli. There's also a baptistry just in front of the cathedral and also we get to, to go inside that structure, which is very curious because it has a, a great eco yeah, inside. Uh, so it's very unique as well. Thank you, Tini. So 
Now on to one of my favorite cities in Italy, Rome. What can you tell us about Rome? What are we going to experience here? Well, Claudia, Rome is always uh, overwhelming for me. It doesn't <laughs> matter how many times I've been there uh, on a tour on my own with my family, with my friends. I stay there. I've been there many times, but I find Rome very, you know, overwhelming because there is so much to mm -hmm. see in each every corner of Rome, and uh, um, you know, for example, starting with the ancient Rome. Um, when we go there, we go there. Um, from, from Florence, of course. And the first thing we do is we have uh, a guided tour, of course, and we have uh, uh, the possibility uh, of uh, going uh, inside uh, the beautiful uh, Colosseo because the Colosseo, of course, is one of the symbols of, of the country. And we take a ride around the city, of course, by us. We get to learn a lot about the city of Rome, ancient Roman history, and we get inside the Colosseum. And this is the interior of the Colosseum. It's amazing. I'm so happy to be able to get inside the Colosseum every time I'm in Rome, because every time I learn something more about this amazing building that was built just for entertainment. You know, it's something that amazes me still today uh, to think that this, the purpose of this building was to give to the people pan and at your chances, bread and circuses, bread and entertainment. And this building could uh, host 50,000 spectators, you know, and still today when we get inside, we get uh, the feeling uh, of, of it. And I'm very happy, Claudia, because, you know, we always, um, we have local guides in, in every city and our local guides are super, super, um, you know, knowledgeable. And uh, we get to learn a lot about all those sites. And, uh, you know, because we are talking about Roman architecture, Roman ruins, and our guides really uh, make uh, uh, all those structures of ancient ruins come alive. And it's great. And it's, uh, they are very gifted, <laughs> for sure. And we are going also inside part of the Roman Forum, which is the ancient downtown Rome. And again, you know, we learn a lot about the ancient Roman times, how people, uh, you know, were living there and uh, a lot of history. And again, all those uh, buildings and nowadays are, you know, are ruins because of course, uh, uh, these buildings are <laughs> centuries. They are, you know, very, very old. Uh, the Colosseum was built in the year 70 AD. So we, you know, we experience a lot. We get to see a lot of uh, uh, ancient uh, Roman history. Uh, the Roman Forum is very, is very big. So we don't walk uh, over, uh, you know, we don't walk the entire forum. Otherwise, we can stay there forever. But being with a local guide, we get to see the highlights of, uh, of, the, of the forum, which is uh, located just uh, very close to the Colosseum, as you can see uh, in this picture. And then we jump on the bus and we take a panoramic drive around the city. And again, we get to see uh, beautiful, you know, uh, sites and buildings. This is a beautiful view, again, of uh, the Roman Forum. We can see also the, the monument to the unification of Italy just behind that uh, white uh, uh, structure over there. And uh, again, after the visit of the, of the Roman Forum, we jump on the bus and we start, you know, driving around around Rome. We get to see uh, places like, like this. This is where the ancient uh, Circus Maximus was located. The, have you seen the, Claudia, the movie Ben-Hur? <laughs> uh, no, I haven't. But Tini, I actually have a question. Um, going back to the Colosseum, we have a question from Esperanza, and she wants to know if the tour inside the Colosseum includes under the Colosseum. Um, at the moment, no, uh, because you know that is you need a special ticket to get under, you know, to visit the underground galleries of the Colosseum, and the very the, the tickets are very hard uh, to get. Uh, and uh, the most of the time it's just special tours, you know, archeological tours and so on are allowed to get under there, but who knows, <laughs> maybe, maybe in the future at the moment, uh, um, I don't think so, no. Thank you. But we spend a good hour inside the Colosseum. We get to learn a lot about it, yes.
And you know, this uh, Circus Maximus used to be, you know, the biggest chariot racetrack in ancient Rome. 300,000 spectators is amazing, <laughs> the size of it. And we don't, we don't have the Circus Maximus anymore, unfortunately, but we still have the empty field and you can actually uh, get the feeling, you know, uh, how big that structure used to be. And this is one of my favorite buildings, <laughs> you know, this is the Pantheon. Uh, an ancient Roman temple dedicated to all the gods uh, that was made uh, uh, in the year 118 AD. Um, this is something that I always recommend to our guests, something you know to do during their free time, uh, because of course Rome is so big that we cannot cover everything in three hours or not even in six hours, you know. Mm -hmm. So I always, um, as all you know, tour directors um, do, we always give to the people maps and directions. And uh, in my opinion, this is something that uh, you cannot miss. This is uh, a, an ancient Roman uh, building, an ancient Roman temple that survived all these centuries because it was turned into a Roman Catholic church. So it, it is amazing. You can still go inside and enjoy this uh, enormous dome that is still today the largest dome built in uh, ever built in unreinforced concrete. And uh, well, the size of it is uh, it's amazing, 142 feet, the diameter of the dome of the Pantheon. So I you know, always recommend to our people to get inside and uh, experience the size of it. It's one of my favorite buildings in the world, as you can tell. <laughs> I never get tired of it. And of course, you know, we have uh, walking distance from the Pantheon. Uh, we have other famous sites of Rome. This is the monument to the unification of Italy. And uh, of course, you can see the flags of Italy uh, there. And uh, but you know, we have something more. We have uh, other beautiful piazzas and corners. Uh, for example, the one on the left. This is uh, uh, Navona Square, a beautiful square with two beautiful fontaine fountains there. And uh, the one in the middle is my favorite. Uh, the fountains of the four rivers. And you know, while you enjoy, uh, you know, this beautiful uh, sight, you can uh, rest in uh, uh, in a pizzeria, in a, in a restaurant, in a bar, have something to drink and relax, have something to eat because also the Roman cuisine is very rich and is very uh, famous and while you keep on <laughs> walking you have to uh, also throw a coin in into the Trevi Fountain and she's here <laughs> she's all bright and clean now because she's been just uh, restored very recently and uh, you know you have to go there and throw your coin inside and have a gelato nearby there is a, a very nice gelato place just next to it I can <laughs> recommend um, you know few places and of course uh, uh, the Spanish steps you know and uh, you know being with um, with a local uh, tour director you can always uh, um, you know rely on, on us I mean uh, we always uh, tell to to our guests to our people what is the best way to get around because you know Claudia as I said Rome is very big so it's very easy to waste time and trying to figure out things, how to go there, how to how to take the metro, for example, and so on. So um, we are there helping the people to make uh, the most of their times because, of course, we have a few days in Rome, but a few days uh, sometimes are not enough, you know, to get to see everything. So we help the people to uh, plan their day, and uh, you know we. we we, we, we are there for every questions and every direction. So, and we are, you know, from there. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that makes things uh, easier. And of course we offer the Vatican City as an optional. And I always say to our uh, travelers that doesn't matter if you want to buy the option, we go ahead or not, you have to go to the Vatican City with, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, organized, uh, a tour because otherwise you waste your time lining up forever. Um, of course, if you can, we go ahead. You are with me and with our <laughs> you are with our <laughs> great local guides. Uh, but um, you know the the way we organize that excursion is very I think it's very well done honestly because. Uh, 
uh, we don't waste time lining up forever to get inside the St. Peter's Basilica or the Sistine Chapel. We just, uh, um, you know, go to the museum first because um, our guide shows the highlight of the museum to our travelers. And then from the museums, we go inside the Sistine Chapel and uh, from the Sistine Chapel inside uh, directly into St. Peter's Basilica. So in this way, we don't waste the time lining up forever and so on. So it's a great value uh, for, for money and for time also. So of course, <laughs> St. Peter's Basilica is one of the, is the biggest Christian church in the world. So it's enormous. And again, by being with a local guide, you get to uh, learn, you know, the most uh, crucial, uh, the, sites of the most important things about uh, um, about the building, which is, of course, you can get lost. Uh, I think that the, the St. Peter's uh, Basilica can host uh, uh, up to 60,000 people. So we are talking about an enormous building. Um, Dini, and then, speaking yes. about uh, this Vatican optional, Patty and Esperanza want to know how much time do they actually spend on this uh, excursion? Uh, well, it's a good half day. Usually, we, we leave in the in very early in the in the morning, and sometimes people, um, you know, they say, "Oh, why did he, Why are we leaving so early in the morning?" And I always <laughs> say, "You will know why <laughs> when we get there, because um, of course we have a reservation to get inside and." Uh, the reservation are usually quite early in the morning because mm -hmm. there are a lot of people going inside the same time. And so we try to beat the crowds and we want our guests to have the, the best uh, uh, experience, you know, possible. And uh, during the high season, you know, uh, the museum, St. Peter's, uh, the Sistine Chapel can be very crowded. So we try to beat the crowds, be there a little bit earlier and get inside first. Uh, this is what, uh, you know, we aim to do. And uh, I would say that a good uh, three to four hours. Yes. So we cover a lot of history and a lot of, uh, uh, you know, ground in those four hours. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Now you've talked about food in Venice. You've talked about food in Florence. So what can you recommend us uh, in Rome? Well, uh, I haven't uh, spoke about pasta yet. <laughs> well, I'm kidding, but uh, I can I can recommend my favorite dish um, in uh, in Rome is spaghetti alla, car alla carbonara. Uh, it it is very local. Uh, it's a local dish made with, of course, spaghetti, and the sauce is made with um, you know those uh, little pieces of uh, of meat. This is not bacon. <laughs> this is uh, guanciale. Uh, this is uh, the, the cheek of the pork. It's a very, you know, uh, good cut of meat, very precious, very tasty. And we mix with pecorino cheese and with egg. And it's very simple, you know, because the Italian cuisine is, is made of very simple ingredients, fresh and simple. And of course, pepper, as I can see here. And, uh, you know, this is something that you can find a little bit everywhere in, uh, in Rome. And uh, if you don't know where to go, of course, your two direct will direct you to the best places to have, uh, you know, a great carbonara. And something that I would like to mention also the artichoke uh, uh, alla Judea, the Jewish style, Jewish style artichoke, because this is something related to the Jewish history of Rome. Because in Rome, we can find also a Jewish district and there are Jewish restaurants there. And they, when it's, of course, when it's season, they serve these wonderful artichokes that are, you know, uh, ancient recipe yeah, of uh, uh, the old times. They are deep fried, very tasty, very good. I love them. And healthy as well, because we are talking about vegetables, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, pizza, of course, focaccia bread, you know, as I said, the Italian cuisine is very simple and, uh, you know, just a few ingredients, very fresh and uh, very tasty. And uh, I love cheese, so I can talk about cheese, uh, you know, <laughs> for hours. Uh, pecorino cheese, Roman pecorino cheese is very tasty, very salty. And sometimes when I don't wanna, you know, spend too much time cooking, I just make some uh, spaghetti at home and I put some, you know, olive oil over and some pecorino cheese and that's it. You know, it's very tasty and very simple. And, um, 
And of course, you know, by walking the streets of uh, Rome, you find food everywhere. And I know that maybe Italians, <laughs> we spend a lot of time uh, talking about food, but honestly, is what we do. Our lifestyle is a little bit, you know, as laid back. So uh, we like, you know, sit down and enjoy a good meal uh, with our friends, with our family. And uh, this is a very much part of our culture. So. As to the rector, we always make sure that our guests eat <laughs> properly. So we make sure that they enjoy also, um, you know, their time uh, while uh, dining. Thank so, you so much, Tini. Thank you, Claudia. Now, I think we can go ahead and jump into the Q&A section. We have a couple of questions from the audience. And I want to start with Karen. Karen wants to know... Uh, she wants to take a gondola, but mm -hmm. are they difficult to get into because she has a fear of falling in the, into the canal? Uh, well, don't worry about that because, um, and well, uh, in 10 years or 11 years of, uh, <laughs> of uh, being a tour director, I, I think I just had a, a guy falling in a canal just once <laughs> and it was a young boy so um it's quite difficult to get in well it's it's not super easy let's say to step into a gondola because there is a big step let's say mm -hmm. well but there are people here uh, to help so it's uh, we make sure you know we, we make sure that uh, the, the person feels comfortable stepping in and uh, um is not a B, you know, it's not a very high step, uh, mm -hmm. would be like something like this. So, mm -hmm. and then you sit down there and you enjoy, you know, the ride, the ride lasts for half an hour, more or less. And, uh, and it's uh, something that uh, you have to do once you get to Venice, in my opinion, it's very romantic. Yes, I agree. Thank you. Now we have a question from Cheryl and Cheryl wants to know what is the driving distance between Venice, Florence and Rome? Okay, so um, driving distance, um, about, I would say about three hours from Venice to, to Florence. Well, of course, uh, once we are on the highway, once we are with a bus, we always stop on the highway. So uh, we always make sure that, uh, um, you know, we have a break uh, at least every hour and a half, more or less, you know, to use the restrooms, to have a mm -hmm. coffee and to, you know, stretch your legs. So we always stop every, you know, half, um, one hour and a half usually. So it's uh, a three hours ride from Venice to Florence and another three hours um, from uh, uh, Florence to Rome. And then um, on the longer version of uh, when it's Florence in Rome, uh, we stop in Orvieto, which is one of, yeah, one of my favorite <laughs> cities in, in the central part of, uh, of Italy. So we get to see another site, another beautiful city located in the central part of the country. Great, thank you. Now yeah. the next question is from uh, Gail and her, she wants to know, do we offer gluten-free options? Gluten-free option, of course. Um, of course, any, anything that you don't eat, any you know, special uh, requirements that you have at the beginning of the tour, you just talk to your tour director. And if you are vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, allergic to you know, whatever, we always make sure that you guys have, uh, you, know, you, have you don't miss your meal <laughs> and mm -hmm. you enjoy your food. So, you know, so good gluten gluten free option, of course. Yes. Yes, Gail. I actually traveled with Go Ahead on my first tour two years ago, and I'm gluten free, so I was terrified of going to Italy because I felt like I wasn't going to be able to enjoy anything. But the options that they had for me were really great, so um, you won't have to worry about that. Now the next question is from Mark, and Mark wants to know if you can talk a little bit about the Murano glass. Oh yes. Well, after the um, the sightseeing tour of um, of Venice, we always have a glass uh, blowing demonstration, 
And so our guests can, uh, you know, uh, learn about uh, this beautiful technique, which is very ancient. And uh, we get to see, uh, you know, a real maestro, uh, master, uh, blowing, you know, and creating a little sculpture in front of our guests. So it's a beautiful uh, ancient art that, thank God, is still, you know, going around, <laughs> still there in Venice. And, uh, and of course, we recommend, uh, you know, a few shops if people want to buy something. And uh, I always say to the people uh, to buy Venetian glass uh, in Venice and not in Florence or Rome, because, you know, you can find all those things all over the country, but you need to be aware also of the, of the prices. Yes. So by being with a local tour director, by being with a local guide, also you have the chance to, you know, not to get, uh, let's say, <laughs> into wrong uh, <laughs> hands. <laughs> Thank you. And then we have a question from Jennifer. And Jennifer wants to know if you can recommend a place to buy limoncello and balsamic. Of course. <laughs> of course, you know, the limoncello is uh, originally from Sorrento. So if, especially mm -hmm. if you're taking the uh, the extension to the Sorrento Peninsula, I can recommend you, or we can, rec everybody, all the two, directs, <laughs> two directors, um, we can recommend you the best places to get limoncello uh, while on tour. Uh, Sorrento will be probably the better place, uh, but of course we have uh, good shops all over the country. And the balsamic vinegar, yes, um, we are not going in, you know, to the city of Modena, which is the one that is, you know, the, uh, where the Pavarotti and uh, <laughs> balsamic vinegar are from, but of course we can recommend you uh, where to buy and how to use, you know, also balsamic vinegar <laughs> because uh, uh, we don't just we don't put it on the salad and, and 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 that's it. We have so many recipes, especially if you buy, you know, uh, you know, uh, proper uh, balsamic vinegar. Um, you can use it in different ways um, with fruit and so on. So yes, we can recommend you definitely everything. Thank you, Tini. And for our last question, Anne wants to know how much money can each guest expect to spend in addition to the cost of the tour? Well, that is a good question because it can be, you know, it depends. It depends on mm -hmm. the, um, on your budget. Uh, you have to take into consideration that a lot of uh, the dinners are, you know, included already in, uh, in the tour. And, uh, and, you know, we have different uh, um, restaurants and different food options for uh, everybody. So you can spend, I don't know, for a dinner, uh, 10, 15, 20 euros uh, or, you know, 500. There is no, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if you are concerned about how much money you would uh, need, you know, to enjoy uh, Italy or, you know, to, to enjoy your vacation. Of course, um, I, I, maybe I cannot say, uh, you know, a number, but uh, you can travel, let's say, low budget in Italy if you want to. They, you don't need a lot of money. Even though it's not, you know, a very cheap country, uh, it's not a cheap country, but uh, it's affordable uh, for you know every every pocket. Let's say uh, a minimum for a meal will be around uh, I would say minimum twenty. I would say twenty dollars. Yeah. Perfect. Thank up you so to, much. Up to whatever. Now, <laughs> like I mentioned in the beginning. We are now starting to run towards Italy starting this August. So if you're interested in getting to know Italy even more and enjoy its beautiful architecture, culture, and delicious food, uh, you can go to goheadtours.com slash VFR for this specific itinerary, but you can also explore other Italian itineraries that we offer uh, around the country. Just to let you know, Vaccination is required as of right now to enter Italy, but this can change in the future. So just keep an eye out on our website for the most up-to-date information on entry requirements. Uh, finally, if you enjoyed yourself today, like Tini and I did, please mark your calendars for our upcoming Travel Talk webinars. We have four destination spotlights coming up. 
Portugal on July 27th, Vienna, Budapest, and Prague on August 10th, Kenya, Wildlife Safari on August 3rd, and Israel on August 31st. You can sign up to all or any of these on our website by going to goaheadtours.com slash webinars. Uh, Tini, thank you so much. Grazie for taking the time to share Bego. your stories Bego. and Bego. insights and for answering our questions. Uh, on tour, we have the pleasure of your company for days and days, but you know, in this short hour, uh, I feel like I learned so much and had a great time. I can't wait to see you in person uh, when too. we're able to. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, if you want to say a few parting words to our audience. Yes, I, I can't wait to, to get back on the road and um, I miss you. I miss everybody. <laughs> we <laughs> I'm miss very you happy. Too. Yeah, I'm very happy. I'm very ready to travel again. Can't we wait. really are as well. Well, thank you so much, everyone, to join us. Uh, we hope to see you on our next uh, Travel Talk webinar. Have a great night. Buonasera. Ciao. Ciao.